Um, and can I welcome everyone to the 17th meeting of 20, 2019 of the Social Security Committee. Uh, can I remind everyone to turn off mobile phones or put other devices to silent mode so they don't disturb uh, the, the meeting. We don't quite have a full compliment yet. Hopefully we, we will have, but no apologies have been received. And we move to agenda item one, Poverty and Equality Commission. The committee will consider the nominees for appointment as members of the Poverty and Equality Commission and the content of a draft report. Prior to this meeting this morning, four members well, three members of our committee met with nominees for appointment to the Commission. The committee agreed at the very beginning of the recruitment process that this should be done in private to ensure the process was, uh, and as I say this, uh, we needn't have worried, but it was the right thing to do, that the process was not intimidating and off-putting for applicants with no experience of public committee meet hearings. I have to say it was a hugely positive meeting. We'll say more about that. In a second, it's important to note that the nominees have already passed a rigorous public appointments process. We were not interviewing the applicants earlier on this morning. Uh, our role was not to interview them again, but rather to confirm that as a group, working with the chair, Bill Scott, that they would be able to fulfil the functions of the Poverty and Inequality Commission as set out in the Act. Um, before I say uh, any more, uh, I was joined by Jeremy Balfour and, 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 and Alison Johnson. I don't know if Jeremy or Alison wants to make any comments at, at, at this point. Alison. Um, thank you, Convener. I was pleased to be part of the meeting this morning. It was a, a welcome opportunity to, uh, to get to know the, the nominees better and to hear from them directly. Um, it, it was noted in the meeting that Individually, they have a wealth of, of experience and expertise, um, and I think it's fair to say that they will, as was suggested, be greater than the sum of their parts, because together they are a, a formidable group, and I think they will challenge politicians, they will be stridently independent, um, they won't sit on the fence and mince their, wor <laughs> mince their words. Um, I think um, they reminded me that poverty is not an intractable issue, that we do have policy choices. Um, they spoke to of the, the fact that Social security is an area where UK and Scottish policy meets um, and it often diverges, so there are challenges there and that um, some of the policies made at Westminster impact on, on what we may choose to do here. But we also discussed the fact, uh, they discussed the fact that we do have options, there are things that this parliament can do too. Um, so I would just, um, yeah, very welcoming off, off the um, appointments and I think the nominees um, individually and in their combined force will make a real difference to the ability um, of us all to tackle poverty and, and exclusion and inequality. Thanks, Thank Alison. Jeremy? Uh, uh, morning, Camina. Uh, not a lot to add to that. Um, I think um, it was a really helpful um, hour together where we could just um, learn about some of the skills of the new uh, commissioners, and I think uh, we do bring um, a diversity there, which I think is something we were very keen on the committee to get, but they are all there on merit as well, which I think is really important. So I think how the process has worked is something hopefully uh, other bodies can learn from, that we do get that diversity, but yet we get that expertise. Uh, and I do hope that they will be able to bring that independent scrutiny um, and challenge not only Scottish Government, but challenge the Parliament and this committee over the next few years. So, uh, yeah, very encouraging morning. Yeah. Thanks for those comments. I'll, again, just make a brief comment. I was hugely impressed by the diversity of, of, of the appointees, uh, the skills and the talents that they will clearly bring um, to, to, to the Commission. I think Alice is absolutely right. They will be greater than the sum of their, their parts. And, and already, I think it was really important to see that um, the the candidates were seeking to be challenging and inquisitive of each other as well as us as committee members which is precisely what we want because it's for the commission to be fiercely independent to be challenging to government to be challenging to this committee and without fear or favour uh, looking at the hard reality of poverty as it impacts the communities that we all serve in this country it's worth pointing out their direct lived experience of poverty uh, within w within the, the, the appointees uh, and a huge range of talents. I was very struck by um, comments around it's not just about how governments seek to implement manifesto commitments, it's about the why of why governments are doing what they're doing, not just that they've said they will do it and what the outcomes might look like, but also what might, what might make the biggest impact in relation to tackling uh, poverty 
in, in our country. So uh, it, it was a privilege to, to meet everyone, and I'm, it's great that they're actually in the, in the public gallery here, here this morning. And I thank them for coming along, along with Bill, Bill Scott, uh, chair, chair of the Commission. Uh, I don't have any other comments to make, but comments or questions from other members or deputy convener. Uh, thanks, uh, Convener. Um, I want to echo everything that's been said so far. Um, I would also like to put on record that I think that the fact that we've arrived here with such a fantastic commission with individuals which you would have hoped to have um, is a testament, I think, to the parliamentary process here. Um, it seems so long ago, I'm sure Bill Scott will testify to this, it seems so long ago that this committee, and I think it's a testament to the robustness of the committee system, that we pushed hard for it to be an anti-poverty anti and inequality commission. And through, I think, ingenuity, I think, of the government ministerial team, and Jeanette Campbell in particular, when Angela Constance was the minister, we found a way forward. And I think that should not be forgotten, that that's where we started off. And now we've arrived at a point where I think the Commission and all of you who are going to serve on it, I think, um, will have one of the most important jobs, I think, to do. Um, in sort of, sort of, uh, a Scottish public policy. So re we read through all the CVs and that. I just think we've arrived at a tremendous, and as Bob um, says, uh, a really diverse group of people who have got fantastic CVs. Um, for my part in it, um, all of the individuals um, that have been appointed um, to this really important role um, show the lived experience, all the things that you would have hoped from a, a commission that's going to take forward the work of the people of Scotland. And as Alison Johnson rightly says, um, this is achievable. This is achievable in our country. It might take some years to do so, but um, I just want to put on record to convey my, my thanks to all of the individuals who have agreed to take forward this important role. Thank you, Pauline. Any other questions or, or, or comments, Michelle? Yeah. Um, obviously, good morning, and I'd like to echo the sentiments. I, I, I read through the, the CVs and haven't actually met the members of the Commission yet, but uh, it is an impressive array, a um, good range of experiences. Um, I'd just like to ask um, one question, really just to, to check. Um, in terms of when you were speaking to everybody, were there any, was anything raised in terms of any gaps? Or was everybody satisfied that all <coughs> all the skills were present? I know we talked a lot um, in the run-up to this in terms of making sure we had all the skills we need. I couldn't spot any that were missing, I have to say, going through the CVs, but just, just wanted to ask that question. Were you comfortable I, they were all there? Yeah, I think so. I, I don't know what Jeremy and Alison think, but I was struck by when we were having... It was obviously a private conversation, but it's not giving away any secrets. We were, we're talking about what the, the child supplement might look like uh, going going forward and the the the, like, sorry, the the income supplement going forward and and the commissioner just having a discussion around that uh, about about international comparisons greatest impact data analysis but then also you can do all that but what will it actually mean to the lived experience of those who need that money as quickly as possible in their pockets who are experiencing poverty now so that that absolute double check if you like to make sure it's not just about doing the academic piece of research and looking at the data it's about what will this mean on the ground what is the reality on the ground um, th there seemed to be quite a, a broad range of skills and every base seemed to be covered from what I could see it was pretty impressive I don't know if Alison or Jeremy want to add anything to that yeah I mean I think it's um, from the, from the uh, nominee CVs um, <laughs> to meeting them in the room you can see that, that there's a great range of diverse lived experience and academic expertise so I think there's that mixture of people who n really really know what they're talking about um, but also a desire to make sure that any actions are evidence-based um, that we're doing all we can to improve data collection what we're looking at why we're looking at it and and how we can use that to, to get the best outcome so I feel very reassured after this morning that this group can make a great difference. Um. Any additional comments? Okay. It might also be worth finally saying that as part of our discussions, um, I, I thought the Commissioner spoke very well about uh, not just analysis and scrutiny, but coming up with constructive solutions towards government, um, as, as well as analysing what, 
what government are, are doing in terms of their policy and the implementation of that, which I thought was really, really interesting to, to hear as well. I thought that was appropriate to, to put on the record this morning. There will be no other uh, questions or comments from members. Can I say that uh, the committee is asked to recommend to the Parliament that the eight nominees should be appointed. I am going to put on the public record their names and then I will seek your agreement. So that would be Linda Bamford, Yvonne Blake, Alex Cobham, Lindsay Graham, Katie Schmucker, Shona Stephen, Morag Trainer, and Douglas White. Is the committee agreed to recommend to Parliament that eight nominees should be appointed? Agreed. Okay. Can I thank you for that and can I thank the, the, the nominees uh, for their time this morning? Uh, the committee is also asked to agree to give authority to the convener and declare to prepare what will be a short factual report to inform Parliament of a recommendation. Is the committee agreed to that? Okay. Uh, there being uh, no other business uh, before us this morning, he says looking at his clerk to make sure I've not forgotten of anything, uh, we can now close the meeting. Thank you all.